Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about microalbuminuria, microglobulinuria. We talked about the urine electrophoresis, urine pH, urine odor, urine color and appearance, as well as urine potassium, urine chloride, and urine uric acid. Today, let's talk about one of the most important tests for kidney function which is the estimated glomerular filtration rate. We can measure the glomerular filtration rate, which is difficult because it requires 24-hour urine, or we can use an equation to estimate the GFR, depending on what? Depending on the clearance of your kidney. How good is your kidney at filtering and clearing your blood? And to get the GFR, we can use inulin, we can use creatinine, or we can use cystatin C. Once you reach 20 years of age, every subsequent decade will reduce your eGFR by about 6.5 milliliters per minute. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Remember, your blood is made of plasma and cells. The cells include red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Out of these, which one is the most abundant? Of course, red blood cells, measured in millions. And then you have plasma, which is made of fluid, water, and proteins. The proteins are either albumin or globulin. If I put your blood in a test tube and leave it alone, the red blood cells will go down, the plasma will go up. It's called sedimentation, it's called density. Red blood cells are denser than the plasma, of course. Out of the total, how much is the red blood cells? It's about 45%. And how about the plasma? The remaining 55%. This 45% is also known as the hematocrit value. Here's your wonderful blood. And this is the plasma in the blood, which is the liquid fluid form. And this is a red blood cell. Which of these will get filtered through the kidney or through any gland? Only the plasma gets filtered, not the red blood cell. So the plasma will be filtered, i.e. it will enter your kidney. And then the kidney will return the good stuff back to your blood again, such as sodium, glucose, etc. As for the waste, they will be dumped into the urine stream. When something enters into the kidney, it's called filtration. When something goes back to the blood, it's called reabsorption. When something ends up in the urine, it's called excretion. When something leaves the blood and goes to the urine, it's called secretion. So here is my blood. It's made of plasma, which includes fluid and plasma proteins, and red blood cells. Are the red blood cells filtered into the kidney? No. Are the plasma proteins filtered through the kidney? Also no, for these two reasons that we talked about before. How about the water in the plasma? Is it filtered? Yeah. How much plasma is filtered into your kidney depends on how fast and how hard your heart is pumping. Because the heart pumps blood that reaches the kidney. How fast multiplied by how hard the heart is pumping is called the cardiac output, which is the output of your heart measured in a minute. So here is your heart pumping out blood. Does all of that blood reach the kidney? Well, we have other organs to feed, so no. About 20 or 25% will end up in your kidney. This is called the renal blood flow. Is all of that blood made of plasma? No, remember that the hematocrit was 45%. These red blood cells will not enter the kidney. Who's gonna enter the kidney? 55% of the renal blood flow. Of the renal blood flow, only the 55% will become renal plasma flow. That's the plasma. Will all of it get filtered into the kidney? No, about 20% of which will be filtered. We call this the filtration fraction. If you're talking about relative terms, or you can call it GFR in absolute terms. It's the glomerular filtration rate. This is what actually got filtered through the glomerulus, which means it left the blood vessel and went into the nephron. It's called glomerular filtration rate. Any rate in physics is something over time. This something here is volume over time. The filtered volume per time. And that's why a good GFR number to memorize is 125. What? Volume, ml, per time, minute. There you go. So how much is the cardiac output? It's your heart rate times your stroke volume. Let's keep it easy. Suppose that the heart rate is 100 and the stroke volume is 50. Multiply them together to get 5,000 mLs per minute or 5 liters per minute. Okay. Is all of this going to the kidney or going to all the organs? Going to all the organs. The kidney will receive about 20%, but let's make it 
1.5% just to make the math easier. So 1 fourth times the cardiac output will give me 1.25 liters. This is the renal blood flow, all of it. Do you want all of it? No, I just want the plasma. This is the one that hopefully will get filtered. So 55% of the 1.25 will give us 600 ml per minute. What's that called? Renal plasma flow. Is all of it getting filtered? No, only 20%. Only the filtration fraction will get filtered. 20% of the renal plasma flow, which means 20% of the 600, will give us 125 ml per minute. This is your GFR. In absolute terms, if you divide it by the renal plasma flow, you get 20%, which is the filtration fraction in relative terms. So how much of the plasma actually got filtered? In relative terms, 20%. In absolute terms, 125 ml per minute. What do you call that per minute glomerular filtration rate? If my glomerular filtration rate is about 125 ml per minute, how much is that per day? Well, since the day has 24 hours and each hour has 60 minutes, therefore it's about 180 liters per day get filtered every day 180 liters get filtered through your kidney how much plasma do you have well your total blood volume is about five liters plasma is about 55 percent let's make it three liters of plasma which means each day your kidney filters all of your plasma 60 freaking times your kidney is amazing you can imagine how much agony patients on dialysis are in. There is just no match for the natural kidney. When you go to dialysis, you go two or three times per week, not 60 times a day. If you have healthy kidneys, you should be very grateful. What do you call the stuff that enters into the glomerulus and enters into the nephron filtration? How about going from the tubule of the kidney, from the nephron, back to the blood reabsorption. How about the opposite going to the urine secretion? The end result is excretion into the urine. Therefore, excretion into the urine is what got filtered minus what I took out, reabsorption, plus what I added, secretion. What do you call it when you put the GFR on top and renal plasma flow on the bottom? What's the name of that fraction? Filtration fraction. The fraction, the percentage, that got filtered. Normally, it's around 20%. The renal plasma flow was 600. How much is 20%? 125 mLs. This is the filtration fraction. This is also the glomerular filtration rate. 20% in relative terms, 125 mLs per minute in absolute terms. What's going to happen to the remaining... 475 mLs per minute, they will continue to this blood vessel known as the efferent arterial, which will become peritubular capillary. This is the one right here. Why is that important? Because if you want to secrete, you will need some force, you will need some pressure to be present in the peritubular capillary. Also, don't forget that each kidney has about a million nephron, so it doesn't make sense that the first nephron is going to take the entire 600. What are the factors that affect glomerular filtration rate? They are many. I've talked about them in great detail in my kidney physiology course. You can download it here. But today, we'll focus on GFR from the lab perspective. How can we measure it? It's about plasma clearance. How good is your kidney at clearing your plasma of any waste? To understand this, you'll need to recall the fixed principle, which we talked about before in my physiology playlist here on YouTube. If I told you that this test tube contains three liters of water, each liter of water has two grams of sodium. Can you give me the total amount of sodium in the test tube? Easy, six. How did you do it? Two times three. In other words, amount equals volume times concentration, which means concentration equals amount over volume, which means volume equals amount over concentration. The glomerular filtration rate is volume per minute. So it's amount over concentration. Definition of plasma clearance. It's the volume of your plasma that got cleared and cleaned from any amount of waste in the urine per minute. So here's the plasma which was dirty before cleaning. And after cleaning, 
Here's your plasma without the waste. This will be returned back to the blood while the waste, X, will end up in the urine. Clearance is about the volume of plasma that got cleared. The volume. But why should I care about the volume of plasma that was cleared? Because this volume of plasma will help us estimate the volume known as glomerular filtration rate. It's volume per minute. How can we measure your GFR? Well, let's talk about inulin. Why inulin? Inulin is something foreign to your body. Your body cannot make inulin. Your body cannot digest or consume inulin. Which means if I give you inulin into your blood, the same amount of inulin is gonna end up in your urine. Your body doesn't know how to deal with it. So your body throws it in the trash known as the urine. So the amount that I gave you is exactly the same as the amount you excreted. I can measure this. I can measure this I'm with you and then what if I know the amount if I know the concentration can I guess the volume yeah can I get the volume of your plasma that got cleared yes can I calculate the plasma clearance? Yes. And the plasma clearance can help me get the GFR because it's also a volume. I gave you an amount of inulin. Okay. This amount, as any amount in the world, is volume of that inulin times the concentration of inulin in the sample. And then what? Watch, because the same amount of inulin will end up in the urine. And the amount is also volume times concentration. This amount equals this amount. Volume of plasma times concentration of inulin in the plasma equals volume of the urine times the concentration of inulin in the urine. And that's how you do it, by focusing on the volume. I need to calculate the volume. The unknown is the volume. Volume times concentration in the plasma is the same as volume times concentration in the urine because the amount of inulin here is the same as the amount of inulin here. What's the unknown? The volume of the plasma, i.e. the plasma clearance. This is the unknown. Do I know this? Yeah, I gave you inulin. I know the concentration of inulin in the sample. How about my urine volume? We can measure this. That's very easy. How about the concentration of inulin in the urine? We can also measure this. Easy. So now I know everything except the plasma volume. Can I get this? Yeah. What's that called? Plasma volume, i.e. clearance of inulin, which can help us calculate the glomerular filtration rate. So here is my unknown, everything else is known, and therefore your equation becometh like this. So glomerular filtration rate equals clearance of inulin equals the volume of plasma that got cleared off the inulin equals the volume of the urine or the urine flow rate per minute times the concentration of inulin in the urine over the concentration of inulin in the plasma. Since I know this, I know this, I know this, let's figure out your GFR, i.e. the clearance of inulin. Surprise, surprise, the clearance of inulin is the same as your GFR, 125 ml per minute. Look at that, who could have imagined? Of course, it makes sense if you understand what the flip you're talking about. Why is insulin perfect? Because insulin is freely filtered through your kidney, and then we will not remove it, we will not add to it. The filtered, the filtration rate will stay the same. What's the problem of inulin? Uh, it's a very expensive experiment. I have to inject you with inulin and wait for 24 hours until I can collect all of the inulin in the urine and then do the calculation. So it's very time consuming. It's easier to measure something that's already in your plasma, which is creatinine. Creatinine is also filtered by your kidney. Creatinine will not get reabsorbed. It will get partially secreted. How much partially? About 10%. And we can tell the computer to account for the 10%. So creatinine will overestimate your GFR by about 10%. But since we are aware of this, we will correct the error and give you the estimated GFR or eGFR. What's the normal? I prefer to memorize 125 mLs per minute, but anything above 60 mLs per minute per 1.73 square meters body surface area is considered normal. And of course, it depends on your age because each decade you grow up beyond 20, you decrease your GFR by about 6.5 mL because you lose some kidney functions, unfortunately. You might feel super healthy at age 35, but trust me, your GFR is lower than that at age 20. Moreover, if you choose to measure it using creatinine, don't forget that creatinine is a product of metabolism of creatine phosphate, which comes from muscle, which means the greater the muscle mass, 
the higher the creatinine. If I'm a very shredded and muscular and huge dude, of course my GFR will be higher because my surface area of the body is higher, which means you have to account for this and divide by the body surface area. As I become an old grandpa, what's gonna happen to my muscle mass? It's deteriorating and my GFR is declining. Males, on average, has a bigger body surface area than females, which means males, on average, has a higher GFR than females. But if you divide by this, males and females should have the same GFR, if you account for the body surface area. So to estimate the GFR, you can use inulin, you can use creatinine. Which one is more accurate? Inulin. Which one is more feasible clinically? Creatinine. Do I have other options? Yes. Option number three is cystatin C. What the flip is that? This is made by oreonucleated cells. It's found in the serum. It's formed at concentrate. It's basically an inhibitor of cysteine proteinase. And it's freely filtered by your kidney, which means we can use it to estimate your GFR. So, to sum it up, to figure out your glomerular filtration rate, which is the volume filtered into your kidney per minute, we can use inulin clearance, creatinine clearance, or cystatin C clearance. It's all about the concept of plasma clearance. It's volume over time. Quiz time. An examiner is trying to measure GFR. The examiner injected inulin intravenously. The urine volume was 0.6 liters per hour. Urine concentration of inulin was 100 milligrams per ml. The plasma concentration of inulin is 20 milligrams per ml. Can you calculate the GFR? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer key in the next video where we talk about creatine kinase. To learn more about glomerular filtration rate, the stalling forces like hydrostatic pressure, oncotic pressure in the glomerulus and in the Bowman's capsule, and to learn about the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, etc., download my renal physiology course at metacosisperfectionetis.com. To learn about kidney function during pregnancy and kidney diseases during pregnancy and preeclampsia and eclampsia, download my OBGYN high yields course. To master the serum anion gap, serum osmolar gap, urine anion gap, and stool osmolar gap, you can download my acid base imbalance course at metacosisperfectionetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.